Welcome to the Angular Paygate sample code video. Here we're going to run through how to get up and running with the Angular sample code and how to understand the basic API. First, you're going to navigate to the directory where you have copied your sample code and you're going to run through the following commands as you can find in the git repo readme. We're first going to run npm install and then npm start. npm install will install the node modules and npm start will start the Angular application. One thing to take notice of is the node server. Due to how Angular handles XRH clients and the redirects are handled by the node server. Let's run npm install. Now we're going to run npm start. As you can see, we're running this on localhost port 4200. If we open that up in the browser, this is just a standard logging screen, which you can use to boilerplate some applications. We have a login and register window. We log in. There's no validation. It's just a sample app. We've got dashboard, payweb3, card payment, and web payment. Just a heads up, if you try to run any of these requests without the node server running, you, you're probably not going to get your expected result. So if we click calculate checksum, you'll see nothing happens. So next we're going to load the node server. So we're going to open a new window. Let's cd into the directory. And we're going to say node server. Server started. I'm going to just refresh this app. And if we say calculate checksum, you can see we've got the request. So this passes the request to the node server, which then does a curl request. And it comes back with the following information and sets up a pay request ID and checksum so that we can initiate the redirect. And here we're on the Paygate, PayWeb3 payment page. So we could say back. redirect back to here which is a new transaction let's calculate checksum as you can see we've passed in the return URL so just a quick note you'll see if you go through the config file the node server is running on port 4000 and the angular server is running on port 4200 you can change all of this when you get down to editing the code yourself I'm going to redirect so I've set the default paygate testing card details you can get more information from the docs this will be a successful transaction. We say submit. And yeah, the result is passed back. Transaction status one. So status one you'll see in the docs is success. So just before I navigate to the next page, I'm going to take note of the reference. And I'm also going to take note of the pay request ID. And then I'm going to continue and go and do the transaction. Uh, make sure that the Paygate ID and secret are the same. So if you're going to practice with a live ID, you need to copy that information into here. This is just the default Paygate test ID. I'm going to click redirect. Enter a successful test card. So here we've got the results. We've seen transaction status 1. If we go here, remember we've copied the request ID and reference. And we do a query. And here we've got all the response. All done. Visa. All the information that you need. Okay, card payment. Very much the same kind of idea as the web payment. We've got all of the additional fields that you might want to add. I'm going to say do oh, just keep in mind that you're going to want this for the, the query. So I'm going to open the query in a new tab. Close this other previous page. I'm going to copy the reference. So you can query by reference, pay request ID, or transaction ID. So we're going to say do auth. Here we've got pay request ID. I'm just going to copy it just for interest sake. And we've got the checksum. I'm going to say redirect. I'm going to say submit. 
So this has returns transaction status one, which is successful. You're now going to say do query, and here's the response. Approved, it all matches up. That's how card payment works. Let's do web payment, it works much the same as card payment. One difference is a card payment, if you look in the Payhost docs, is direct. So you're literally passing the card details to Payhost and it's just authorizing and returning the response. Whereas a web payment redirects to a web view, the user then puts their details into the web view and then the response is brought back. So this would be, web payments would typically be used in more client facing apps, whereas you might use a card payment to authorize for hotels or booking forms or for offline payments. Okay, so under web payment, here's all of the additional fields, airline fields, these are all part of the docs. So there may be more fields that get added, so always refer to the doc. This is just a good starting point for you to get started. Okay, we're gonna say do all. Here we've got the pay request ID. On my other screen, I'm gonna to go to query and just pass it there. You can check by reference and transaction ID, but generally I would just use pay request ID because all of the transactions are referenced to on the Paygate system using the pay request ID. So it's just a standard that I've used. We're gonna say redirect. We're gonna say okay. We're going to say next. Here's the 3D secure screen. We're going to say submit. Here we go. Here's the details. So what we can do here is just pick up that pay request ID. Oh, I already had it. We're going to say do query. Here we go. Approved. So that's the basic application you can use this as a starting point or you might just want to take specific classes from for the pay web or card payment web payment you've got a basic bootstrap with that log out this is just a fake login that you could add validation if you want and there's also right to left and left to right those are just some bonuses also a collapse sidebar and that should get you started with your angular sample code